Got to do something about that plant. That's definitely on the list of stuff that I want to get done today in today's video. Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got the ladder out. That always means fun things are about to happen. As I've mentioned in the last few videos, got a lot of catching up to do out here. Figured this would be a good video of just like, let's hang out and do stuff in the grow space. Probably mostly gonna be a lot of little random things. Some cleaning up, have some pots to put away, some aeroid mix to store. There's some mealybugs on some of the orchids I need to handle. And this is, well, this isn't even for this video. I actually just picked up the camera so I could use this B-roll for a video that will come out right before this with a product that I didn't have in hand for the video and I had to use something else. So I'll be clipping that out of this video and inserting it into Wednesday's video, which was in the past. And we got some hooks up in the ceiling, hang up some lights. I'm thinking it's probably warmed up enough. I'm tripping over grow lights out here. Hold on. I'm thinking the weather's looking good enough to move some of the plants back out, at least for a couple of weeks. I have to move them in and out a lot this time of year, but as long as it's nice enough to have them outside, I just prefer them to be out there. So most of the little guys in the front, those can go out. The windmill palms, I mean, may as well. Coldest temperature's 20 and the windmill palms have always been fine with that. There are some inflorescence getting ready to shoot out of the big windmill palm, which I'm really excited about. Did that last year too. I'd be more excited about it if my little one over here would do it too. We can make little windmill palm babies. I might hold off on moving the mule palms out. This one over here, it's just looking bad. It has like four fronds that need to be cut off of it. And it's just, went on a very, very, very quick and rapid decline. I'm not really certain why. They've always been very easy going palm trees. They got repotted, they put on some growth this year. So I don't know, this one will probably go back out even though this also has some stuff in the middle that's not looking too good, but it's not the entire spear. It's thinking out loud right now. I don't need to be doing this in the video. I'll make up my mind up later and we can talk about that. The windmill palms are definitely going back out though, <laughs> partially because I need to make room. I need to get in here and straighten up this croton. It's just, it's, I, do you see how it's leaning? It's driving me nuts. Have some rope here, pop some holes in the pot and try and pull it backwards. I think I found a pot big enough to repot this. So maybe if it gets warm enough, I'll repot it. I have to take it outside to do that, so oh, we will see. Main objective, lights, some organization on the shelves, and then make some space out here and do some clean and tight. We're just gonna hang out and play with plants for four minutes in. It's already happened. Don't even need to be talking about it anymore, do we? Yeah, I'll get it. I'm gonna gather some supplies and get to working. Start getting some stuff done out here. Two down, maybe two to go? I haven't decided yet. Got the lights up, just Two of them though. Right now I'm trying to decide if uh, this, is that, gonna, is that gonna bother anybody? Dumb question, it's the internet. Always someone is gonna be bothered by something stupid. I'll get the dirt off the table. It always gets me when I get the comments when I'm out here moving plants around, repotting things and someone goes, it's so dirty. I can't, no sh I'm gardening, it's dirt. You deal with dirt, things get dirty. Come on, people. All right, hopefully that's better for anybody who that would have been bothering. I know some people get really stressed out by dirt and dirtiness. I don't blame you, I get it. As I was saying, started off with getting two of those lights hung up here. It didn't film the process partially because I'm up on a ladder, you know, 12 feet up that want well, not 12, the ceilings are 12 feet, but I wasn't 12. You get it. This is not really the appropriate time to have the camera out when I'm up there on the ladder trying to pull these things around. Also, there's a lot of cobwebs up there. And I feel like cleaning them off, so I just figured I wouldn't bring y'all along so you wouldn't have to see them, but I'd still tell you about it. I have two more lights. The issue I've been having is whether or not I go ahead and hang them up. The way the hooks are set up there is difficult to get them straight, and I'm, I don't really care, to be honest. Not without moving the bike, which I don't really, I don't, want to move the bike. There's nowhere to put it this time of year, I'm not even using it, so I'd rather it just stay up there. And so because of that, like where the studs are, I would have needed to put another hook in this one to get up higher. I would like it to be higher, but because of the stud spacing, I just, eh, it's fine. I have some drywall anchors. I just, eh, it's only gonna bring them up six inches. I'm thinking that I may end up doing some steel in this spot at a different time, the, like this stuff right here, the steel rail and run that across it's more firm and more sturdy and then the lights could actually be at least on this end they could be pushed flush up against the ceiling over here they don't need to be that high i don't I actually don't want them to be that high i don't see any reason to go through and do anything major with 
the ceiling as it is at this moment because as these lights burn out, I'm going to be replacing them with well, better <laughs> lights. These are just shop lights from Sam's Club. They're cheap. They do the trick. The plants keep growing. They're not ideal. And as time goes on and they fizzle out, I would like to be replacing them with nicer plant light. Uh, <laughs> replace them with nicer lights. They're actually meant for growing plants. Something with more efficient LEDs that have a higher wattage and just, well, you know, do more. I have the other two lights sitting over here, but the problem is I only have one chain. I'm going to need four to get those all hung up. So I guess for now, this is where that stops. This right here, this chain, I need three more of those. But I did do some digging around and managed to find this chunk of chain here in the bedroom. I could probably fairly easily cut if I could find my, uh, you know, the my wire wire cutters. Maybe two lights is just fine for right now. It actually is fine for right now because even with just that, I can do some arranging with the plants up there and start to get more things moved into place. But for right now, I can go over here and play with the plants. I have a lot of pruning to do and there's still a lot of space on these two shelves up here and I have plants that are still sitting on the ground that need to go up there, which I cannot wait to do. It's gonna free up a lot of space to walk around out here. <laughs> Already moved on to other things and making a new mess. Oh, not really, still working on the same thing. I went to move this philodendron here, thematophyllum, lickety split, a bipinate ephidum type. I was going to move it up to the shelf. That was the first plant that I picked up. Remembered or noticed that the pot was cracked and needed to be repotted. So wondering how many more instances of that there's going to be because it should just be quick and fun but i have a feeling that a lot of the plants around the ground are probably going to need some tlc before i put them up there just have me thinking about the light situation there's a point to all this i've mentioned it for a reason well one y'all saw this plant when i got it a long time ago it was a tiny little thing so i thought maybe like an update there it is it's fine i think it was in a six inch container at the time i purchased it and it's been in a 10 inch for a while this is nice and firm I'll probably repot this again, more than likely in the summertime. I don't see a reason to right now since I just bumped it into another container that's about the same size as the one it was just in. I just saw a centipede running through those roots. I had my hands in there. I could have died. I didn't even know it was there. Yeah, so if I'm going to be doing any kind of pruning on the plant, they really should have all four lights up, right? That's important. Pruning the plants, you need lights to get the new growth to come out. I'm gonna tinker with that some more, see if I can get this chain here split and if it's going to be something I can do fairly quickly, I'm gonna get those other lights up just because, like I said, if I'm pruning them, they're going to need light to push out new growth from the cutbacks that they're having. Well, I guess I could just wait a week to prune. No, I like to get this done. I'm gonna take another stab at it. The only other thing that I know needs to be repotted is I have a philodendron McDowell, which I don't have a lot of aeroid mix left, but I think that doesn't matter. So maybe I'll do, I'll get these lights up of the uh, lickety split onto the shelves and then, well, maybe give y'all a peek at the shelves to begin with before I start loading them up and then uh, repot a philodendron, maybe two. I think I have a Gloriosa that needs a new pot also. I think that's going to have to be good enough. Have two of them up over the shelf here with the croton and well, what's over here doesn't matter. I'm gonna be putting more things over here. The other light I went to put up on this side so that there'd be two and two and two, like I talked about, I think, just previously. I don't really know. It's the next day. It was broken. Didn't work. It was doing that thing where sometimes it would turn on and sometimes it wouldn't. So I was like, I'm just, I'm just going to chuck that light. It's fine. This shelf has had one light on it for three years now. And it hasn't been an issue. It's by a window also. So that's another reason I'm not as concerned about it. And most of the plants that I put up here on the top shelf aren't plants that I typically have growing uh, abundantly. That's not really the right way to put it. The top shelf tends to be plants that are plants that like to be more on the dry side during the winter time and a little bit more cool, gentle airflow, that sort of thing. With the new heater, I figured that there's not going to be as much of that, I don't want to say dormancy, but just calm <laughs> growing season for some of those plants like there has been in the past. But now I do have the anthuriums up here and some other plants and just kind of, it's kind of an experiment, just need to see what's going to happen. Okay, so that's done. Lighting's good. Don't have to worry about that anymore. I'm going to give my freckles a trim, which I don't, I don't want to do it, but I need to do it. This plant has gone very bare down low. It needs to fill back out and get bushy again. I've had it for such a long time. It just, 
This is what it needs. I just really, I don't want to do it. There was a time to do it. It's right now because it has time to uh, fill back out before it gets moved back out for springtime. I didn't, I felt so bad doing that. I love this plant so much. No, it's just a croton, but it's been such an easy plant. One of the easiest freaking house plants I think I've ever grown in my life. It's just so fuss free. It doesn't care about anything. So I enjoy looking at it in all of its fullness and everything, but this is what needs to be done. It needs to get full again. It's not looking too hot. It's all that lower growth being open and bare. I'd like to see more foliage and some more branching, like, well, like this piece that I just cut off that I probably shouldn't have cut off. Once I get the clippers in my hand, I always have to be careful to not take it too far. So I'm starting higher than I think I would probably need to just to be safe. Seeing some webbing in here. Is the camera gonna focus on it? Probably not. All right, last one back here and get that cut when that, okay, that's gone. That's another reason I don't like to film when I'm on the ladder, not even just a safety thing, but doing everything with one hand and can't adjust the focus if the camera decides to misbehave. That webbing, that's something I'm paying close attention to. I've noticed on my other croton, it's got a lot on it. I just noticed that this morning. I don't know why I'm just now noticing it. I don't really know how I'm just now noticing that because I check the plants out every single day. I'm out here looking at them, but it's like out of nowhere, it's just got, Got spider mite webbing all over it. I have been very diligent with those predator mites and it really did seem like that was working well, but I don't know. I'm thinking I'm gonna have to make some changes out here. I should probably give the Pseudoranthum I'm a prune to while I'm at it, huh? I guess so. May as well get them all cut back. Pseudoranthum can hang out in the back. That's a plant that is very low fuss as long as a little bit of water hits it. It's not going to have any issues during the winter time. Dracaena can go in the back. It's not a plant that I ever have to worry about. And look at all the space that's left up here and over there on that shelf. I'm going to take these inside and give them a very heavy rinse and throw them into a vase so I can let them stay hydrated and decide if I want to do any props with them. See, I really like the freckles croton, but uh, this spider mite situation, I don't know. I gotta think about it. Ow, oh. Oh, that, not a smart place to have a cactus. It's not one that has many thorns on it, but that was right in the... Nice clean water, plastic bag, help contain anything that I didn't get blasted out of there. Those will be okay for a couple days while I figure out what I want to do with them. I know, I haven't, I haven't, there's still Christmas stuff up. Most of it's been put away. You don't, you not feeling like saying, hi, uh, yeah, that was turbo. You heard turbo, huh? <laughs> Figured this is an opportunity for the pets since they haven't been around much. Hey Turbo, how you doing baby? How you doing? I almost called him Tucker. Still do that sometimes. He's been a bit of a brat today. He didn't take him on his morning walk because it's like 19 degrees outside or 21 I think is what it says. That's, that's too cold. I'm sorry baby, that's too cold. There's Charlie and where's Pumpkin? Under, there she is, hey Pumpkin. How you doing buddy? Such a sweetheart. Oh, and Toby. Okay, there they are. Time to get back to work. I'm sorry, Turbo. I'm sorry, I'll finish up soon. We can run and play or do something. So back on the spider mites. It's not that obvious, but if you look hard enough, it's gonna be hard to get on camera here. It's a bit of a reach. You can see in there, see that? And that's going on in just about 50% of the centers of the stems that are coming out there. So I'm gonna call that a big fat fail on the predator mites, which is funny because what was it? Just last week that I was talking about how much they seem to be working and I wasn't seeing any signs of them anywhere. And then out of nowhere, it's just boom. Yeah, not much happening there. Not thrilled about that. You know, those things are pretty expensive, like really expensive. You're doing that twice a month for three months, spent a few hundred bucks on predator mites so far and yeah, well, at least gave it a try. And now I know to try something different. <laughs> Be careful moving up around that cactus this time. Get the philodendron up over there. What else can I put up here? Hibiscus that would probably like being up by those grow lights. That needs hefty cutback. Could probably cut it back even further. It has a bunch of dead wood in it from the, well, from the freezes. This one got exposed to some cold. For now, just going to keep it a fairly even all around prone. It's partially just to maintain the shape too that I'd like to see on the plant. Go, 
Room for you up there. What else? Actually, as I'm looking around making decisions about things, this right here is a Black Coral Colochesia, and I've decided it's got to go. Fairly certain that it was the source of the spider mites. It's not a hard to come by plant, and I would rather just get it out of here because it's another plant that I've noticed still has spider mites on it, no matter how many sprays, no matter, but I've, I've done just about everything under the sun. Names, predator mites, and even like some harsh things that I won't talk about because people get really upset when you use chemicals, even though everything we use is a chemical, except for the predator mites. Hasn't been working. Been trying since June or July and they keep coming back, so it's gotta grow. It's not a plant I care about enough for it to be worth all of that hassle. Okay, the other plants that I'm thinking about putting up there are larger plants. I'm going to need to pull those out and do some pruning on them. I think what I'm going to do is get these shelves loaded up and come back and we can just have a look at what's up here. I go through and do the whole thinking out loud thing with each one of these that I decide to move up there. It's This video is gonna be extremely long. This is nice. That's a good feeling. Wanted to have this done for a long, long time. I ended up only moving a few more plants up here as I, well, I should show you the plants. There they are. The others that I want to put up here are some alocasia and some philodendron, all of which, well, I guess the alocasias don't. The philodendrons need to be repotted, which I'm pretty sure I mentioned earlier in the video, but I'm not confident that I have quite enough aeroid mix. So I have a cart filled up. I'm going to place an order for supplies. I just, I don't want to start on something that I can't finish. To, I don't think that'd be a smart thing to do. So just hold off on that for now. And I'm going to be playing a, a bit of a shuffle, a Tetris here with plants. I'm actually even considering maybe pulling all of the plants off these shelves, this rack right here particularly, and uh, adjusting everything up some more because this shelf could go up a lot higher, which would bring this shelf up higher and it would allow me some more space down below because things are pretty tight down there on that lower shelf. I would like to have I mean, just a few more inches of space. I didn't think that that would make a huge difference, but I think that it would be nice because some of the plants down there get kind of crispy and I do still have some other plants that are too big for either one of these shelves right here, but too small to go over here. They'd be too far from the grow lights. One of those projects where you can only plan it out partially and you have to just get in there and get your hands dirty to really figure out all the moving parts and how you want to go about doing things. So that's where that stops for right now. Overall, very pleased. It's some much needed pruning on the hibiscus. This is another hibiscus in the front. It's a really pretty coral flower on it. Had that one for a long time. It needed a prune. I meant to prune back the mother and daughter croton, but I just, I was feeling it and I was really into moving the plants around. I just tossed it up there. But that's okay because when I get those other plants repotted, I'll give that a prune too. Pretty much all of the crotons, even my big one, they need some heavy cutbacks. I'll talk about that with the big croton and round off the spider mite conversation here in a moment. I, don't, I was really determined to have this dwarf banana on the shelf over here, but I, eh, I don't, maybe not. Can't really say that that works, right? The nice thing about a banana though is as long as I preserve about 50% of that trunk, it's still going to be at its fruiting potential as far as maturity goes. So I could just give that a cut right there if I wanted to. This container, you wouldn't think it, it's only like, I think maybe 14 inches. It is extremely heavy. So there's no way, I mean, there is, I could put it up there. I really don't want to. I know that I will not enjoy having to move it down or even getting it up there is the dangerous part, but getting it back down should I need to attend to it, which I probably will because, you know, bananas. Other option here, of course, would be to pull those plants down off the top and raise this rack up just a little bit more. I don't want to do that though because the lights that are up there are almost to the ceiling. I could get them up maybe another six inches and then raise this up another six inches, but I don't think that the juice would be worth the squeeze there as far as what I would get out of it. it makes more sense to put the plants in spots where the fit more appropriately. Other thing with this banana right here, it doesn't really even need to be on the shelf. This thing is a freaking trooper. As far as bananas go, it's been just sitting on the ground, not under a grow light for a long time. Actually, it was down here around this corner in fairly dark conditions, doing fine. Pruned maybe three leaves off of it before I put it up there. It had three brown leaves on it. That's pretty dang good. Not totally shocking. Bananas, when you have them in a more dark spot and you let them stay more on the dry side, they tend to just 
chill out, which is my kind of plant as far as winter care is concerned. But it's so stinking cute. I've been doing so well, I figured I'd get up on the shelf and under the grow light, which should... Yeah, all right, we'll call that a fail. That's fine. You can give it a cut. It'll fit there more appropriately. And then by the time spring comes around and goes back outside, it'll put on whatever growth it has left. I would imagine that this will probably fruit and look pretty good by July to August, somewhere in there, assuming it doesn't get demolished by spider mites. I guess I could say that about pretty much everything out here. So that's what's going on with the racks. Pretty happy with how that ended up going. I mean, it's not ended up. It's not done, obviously. There's still plenty to do. There's still a lot of space up here for the other philodendrons. And uh, I do have another light that I just remembered that I can put up here, which would be good because you can see the, some of them aren't going to get a ton because they're facing forward and I forgot to prune the croton. Just blocking an awful lot of light from that strip light up there. The other light that I have is much higher wattage. I mentioned when they break, pretty sure I did, yes, I think so. Yeah, I did, that as these burn out, I want to start replacing them with higher grade actual grow lights. So I do have one that I can put here. Just need some uh, cable management stuff so I can screw the cord in to the ceiling, not have it draping down and get that run down. So that's another thing on the list. Like I said, sometimes you don't know what you're gonna need until you get into the process and start to see what all the moving parts are. Freed up a ton of space over here. There are a couple more. So this is the oleander that had some cold damage. It is starting to bounce back now that I'm starting to see some more green come out of it. I'm going to give this another prune and get all that dead stuff out of there. That's I don't not really of any significance. I don't plan on putting that on the shelf, but I might, we'll see. The Adansoni over here, it's, it needs a new pole. I really wanted to put this up there on the shelf, but it's a little skinny wooden stake is too tall. It was hitting the ceiling. That's a plant that would really prefer to have a thicker, either wood slab or a moss pole to grab onto. So again, on the list, I can actually walk around out here. I'm gonna come in with a broom and get all this stuff swept out, all the dead stuff. I need to take out that cold case I decided to get rid of this bag right here. It's all spider mite stuff that I cut out of the plants and a few banana leaves that didn't have any spider mites on them. I'm not giving up on the predator mites. Not yet, they're getting one, okay, maybe two more shots and that's it. I was already expecting an order to come in uh, next week with, I think, 5,000 of a mix of spider mites. I've been alternating between a special blend that's a mix and the Californicus spider mites. That's what I've been using. Can't tell you that that's been working now that I've seen all the webbing and whatnot going on inside of the croton and on a lot of the alocasias that were over there on the shelves. However, I do think it has probably slowed the process down because spider mites are one of those pests that once you see them, once, <laughs> that once you see them, really need to act fast. It's not the kind of thing where you go, okay, yeah, I see that's an issue. I'll take care of that another time. No, you gotta act on it very quickly. At the very least, a damp sponge and wipe the plant down, something along those lines. It's 28 degrees outside and I need to move this outside to do much with it. So despite me saying it's something where you shouldn't put it off, I just kind of have to. I could blast it with water, which is what I'll be doing when I take it outside, but I, just, I don't really see the logic behind it. I think I'd just be spreading them even further. So I'm going to go in and hit the centers with diluted peppermint oil just to help cut back on the webbing and maybe open things up. That's the issue, right, with using beneficial predators is that once they're there, you can't, you can't go back. So I don't want to jump right into using soaps or neems or anything more harsh at just yet. I'm, at least I'm gonna give it just a little bit longer because that will also kill all the beneficials. There are a lot of ladybugs out here. And also I have not seen a single fungus net out here. It's very unusual. They're normally a problem, not a huge problem. You know, put up some traps and they're pretty easy to treat too. I have a bacteria I've talked about that I add to the water and just use that in the watering can and that generally takes care of them within a few weeks. So fungus gnats, no big deal but I haven't been seeing them. And that has me wondering, just had me wondering if maybe the special blend predator mites that I've been getting might be uh, more heavy with the uh, type of uh, predator mite that eats fungus gnat larvae. Man, that, for some reason that was really hard to get out of my mouth. I think they're called hypoases, I believe. Hypoases is the type of spider mite that they deal with soil dwelling critters. So maybe that's what's going on. And also, I, mean, I guess maybe I just haven't been spreading them evenly enough. I've been making it a point to spread them evenly, but 
There are a lot of plants out here. My guess with the croton is that there's a lot of dense foliage here that's really packed together, and that's usually just a recipe for disaster when it comes to bugs. So I probably haven't been getting those into this area in here as well as I should have been, and then they were not able to get up into the croton as well as I would like them to. Whatever the case, there are more predator mites coming in the mail next week, and I've added to the order, so instead of getting 5,000 mites next week, I'm getting uh, 32,000. 32,000. 32, lots and lots and lots. I'm going to go very heavy, and that's going to be after I get the croton outside. We have a day or two next week where it's going to be in the 50s, so I will be pulling the croton outside. I'm going to blast it with water, like just high pressure, get as much of that gunk out of there as I possibly can. I'll probably go ahead and repot it because the reason it's leaning is because it needs to be in a new pot. And since I'm going to have it outside anyways, may as well bump it up into a larger pot, assuming that the nursery has the soil that I want. This time of year, the nurseries don't stock very much. Uh, heck, most of them aren't even open. I mean, I can find the soil. I'll get it repotted. If not, then I'll tie it up like I mentioned in the beginning of the video. And then those new mites will come in the mail. I actually don't think they're going to be here next week. It's like the 23rd through the 27th. So I'm going to have to be really on top of spot spraying with the diluted peppermint oil until those get here. And then uh, give the plants a heavy rinse before I release the predator mites so that the peppermint oil residues don't hurt them, which it shouldn't. That's something that gets them on contact. If they're just crawling across it, it might irritate them. That's not going to cover their bodies and smother them like it would when you just spray it on contact. So I don't think that that'll be a problem. And I'm going to switch to doing the mites every single week. It's expensive. This one order is gonna be like 225 bucks on predator mites. But yeah, only gonna be giving those a few more shots if it doesn't work out. Into the soaps, the neems, and if those don't work, then bug bomb. Pretty sure the predator mites are still doing their thing and working hard. There's just a lot of plants out here and a lot of ground to cover. Tiny little mites can only travel so far, right? So that's why I have a huge, gigantic order of them coming in that I can spread and get more heavy concentrations in areas where I'm seeing that they are a major problem and can go more thin in other areas. What's been surprising to me is that the plants that I would typically expect to be covered in spider mites, if I were having a spider mite issue, they're not. With the exception of uh, two of the alocasias, but even then they weren't covered. It was just one of those things where you looked at the leaves and you could see that they were mottled and what closer and you see some of that dust on there and go, okay, yeah, that's gotta go that sort of thing. Typically, my spider mites are the absolute worst on my cordolins, which I do think there are spider mites on there, but they haven't taken over that I can tell. It's possible when I move this croton out of here in a few days that there could be like a big old mess of webbing and spider mites in there. I doubt that. I would expect mealy lugs to be in there because that's what always happens with them. I just brought these cordolins in as like a last minute Thing. They had to move the plants in so suddenly this past October. There wasn't a lot of planning time allowed because the cold came out of absolutely nowhere. They got moved in a month earlier than normal, so they also didn't get all the spraying and prep that they usually get before they come in. And I figured, I was like, well, I'll just, I'm not sure if I want to keep them or just get new ones next year. So I went ahead and I just brought them in. But I treat those just like the black magic or black coral colocasia. If it's going to be a pain, it's gonna go. There are too many other things out here that I really, really care about and don't want to have bug problems with that the $20 cordolin, not worth it to me. But it's worth trying, right? I mean, 20 bucks is 20 bucks. Might as well try and save them. And it's part of growing plants. We want to watch them grow and get bigger and mature, not just look like they just came home from a nursery. They always look nice when they just come home from a nursery. But a lot of the reason that we grow them is for the time we put into them, the time we spend with them, all that patience and to have the reward and that tranquility you get from being around them and watching them grow. We're gonna talk about all that next week when I'm working with this stuff. This is gonna be much more of a preventative measure and some pruning. I need to get the ladder up over here onto this side now that I'm done over there and do some pruning inside the Eureka pump. Otherwise, I think I've done about everything I can do in this video. I, I did move the ginger. There is basically nothing left in there, so I just cut everything back and I've set it into a corner in my basement to let it go dormant, and I'll just move it back outside in the summer. I'll probably throw it in the ground and just let it do its thing outside. Loving all of this. Can't wait to get some more plants put up here. I'm really looking forward to repotting some of the aeroids and getting those up here as well. I think that'll just, well, for one, look nice, and uh, every plant I can get up off the ground is a win. Have them more tidy and organized. It's easier to go through it. 
look at them and take care of them. You keep them looking beautiful, like this one, just looking great. And the heliconias, another plant I would expect to be just riddled with spider mites. Nothing, not, not a single thing on there that I can see. Remember, I thought that that was the case a week ago. I was like, man, these predator mites are really working. I'm not seeing spider mites anymore. Five days later, I'm seeing them all over the croton. It's covered. There are tons of them in there. So for a while, my little morning walks through the growth space with my watering can and pruners is going to be probably also done with a magnifying glass because they're really small and conspicuous and I guess I'm just not seeing them apparently when they're right in front of me. Oh, that's a little bit harsh. This croton, I can't get very close to it. It's on the other side of the pond and it's up in the air. The other plants like the alocasias, it was all leaves that were facing away from me. So that's on me. I should be pulling those leaves around and checking on them when I know there's a spider mite problem going on. Oh well, what's done is done. Not the end of the world. Lots of different methods to taking care of it. I like how it went from having a mealybug issue for five years straight to now it's just spider mites. I think I'd take the mealybugs over the spider mites, to be honest. Spider mites, I don't know what it is about them. I do think they're easier to get rid of the mealybugs, but it's just, they're really gross. I don't like having them around. And now I'm just rambling. Okay, hope everybody's doing well. Comment down below, say hi. Love talking to everybody. Tips, tricks, suggestions, what you do with your spider mites. If you have a specific species with the predator mites that you prefer, let me know, that's useful information. Looking forward to doing lots of pruning and repots and dealing with this monster back here next week. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.